Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Alright, so this is going to be the last video I shoot for a little bit. Um, I've got to get some uh, some knives started and then finished. Um, the Christmas rush is already starting, so so i got to get my butt back to work. So i got the TV gone, the microscope, the covers put back on it and everything. This last video is going to be on using a strop uh, with your straight razor. Um, I did one... Uh, let's see, I did two of them today. One of them was on uh, the importance of stropping after your shave, um, hand stropping, and um, you know your normal strop. Uh, and then the second video was supposed to be just um, you know a quick tune-up on an edge uh, with a lower grit stone, a Belgium blue codicil, and that ended up turning into a full-blown, hey, this is what the edge looked like when it started. And then we brought up a burr on one side, brought up the burr on the other side. We uh, then switched from, or that was on a thousand grit um, Suhiro, uh, Suhiro 1-6 uh, combination stone. Brought up the burr on one side, brought it up on the other side, refined it and weakened it. Um, also refined our scratch pattern and then went straight to the 6,000 grit side. Um, moved the burr from one side to the other, uh, weakened it up considerably, did some, uh, uh, did some tra uh, either trailing edge strokes, they're called, or uh, just stone stropping, um, just to get everything, you know, just as weak and as perfect as we possibly could, or the, the burr as weak as we could and the edge uh, just as perfect as we could get it. We did some palm stropping to uh, knock off the burr and then went straight to a chromium oxide strop followed by canvas and then, or linen, and then to the leather and I got to show you on underneath the microscope at each uh, stage of the game what was happening and why it was happening. And I just started, uh, I stitched all them videos together and it's saving, it'll probably take probably two or three days to get that saved to the laptop and then uploaded onto YouTube because it's like an hour and a half long video. Um, for you guys that, that don't like the videos and have short, uh, short attention spans, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, fast forward through it as much as you feel like you need to to get to the end. Anyway, so this one is on the strop. Now, I've got, oh, I've got a whole bunch of strops. I mean, I made some strops out of um, uh, Latigo from Tandy um, and uh, the old, the, they call them gate belts. Uh, it's a two inch wide cotton uh, belt that you use for um, like in home health, you know, like let's say you've got a, an injured or an elderly person and you know they need help standing up and sitting back down and bathing and all that kind of stuff. Well those gate belts give you uh, give you something to hold on to just in case that person falls. You've got, you know, um, it's a really heavy duty little belt but um, they work pretty good for um, uh, improvised strops. Um, I've got some that I made out of, um, oh, I can't remember, like burlap strapping that you get from Hobby Lobby. But my absolute favorite strops are these from Lynn Abrams at Straight Razor Designs. Um, and this is a plug for him. Uh, whether he knows it or not, I like these strops. I like them an awful lot. Um, the one that I use is English Bridal uh, on one side, and then you've got his linen material on the other side, and then you've got the chromium oxide that goes on the linen side, and then typically gets transferred onto the leather side, even though I, I don't ever use the, the back side of the leather to strop. Um, I will say that, okay, so first of all, the strop. The hardware and everything is top notch. You've got little Chicago screws so that you know if you happen to cut a strop up, strop up um, or you just get tired of it and you want to try something else, you can unscrew all this. Um, and he sells just the replacement leather or just the replacement linen. He sells the uh, the linen side in a like a nylon webbing, which I have not tried. Um, the uh, linen material which is the only thing I've tried and I really like it a lot and then he also sells uh, like a pressed wool type of fabric for the back um, but the only one I've tried so far is the linen I really like it um, and it works really good it's got nice comfy handles three inches wide so it'll uh, accommodate most straight razors uh, without having to do excessive amount of X strokes the only thing I do to, to add to it is I take a short length of um, 
paracord and just make a loop on the end. Now typically I keep this um, in my bathroom. Um, the door, um, my bathroom door has got three hinges. So I took the middle hinge, took a screwdriver, and just popped that, that hinge pin up. Oh, about that much or so. And that makes an absolute perfect place to hang it. Um, it's about at the right height when you go to use it. And then, you know, when you're, when you're done with your shave, I just put it back there. Um, you know, with the door being closed, uh, there's not as much of a chance for, you know, dust to get back down in there quite as much that I've noticed. Anyway, um, and I'll sh I think I showed you in the last video, this loop right here, um, I'll explain that now. I normally put the ring onto the hinge pin. Let me make sure you can see that. there. <clears throat> so I normally put the steel loop on the hinge pin, you know, that it's uh, that it's hanging off of. And then of course use the strop as normal, right? Well, when you want to do when you want to use the chromium oxide uh, portion, it's really tough to, you know, kind of hold this up out of the way. This will tend to to bring fall over and then, you know, there's uh, you don't get a nice flat surface. So what I do is I take that little piece of uh, paracord and I just do one of these things and that hooks onto the, the hinge pin. In fact, this is how it normally sits on the hinge pin and then when I go to store it, I just put that up there. Okay, well, this little bit of cord right here, what it does is it allows me to take the leather side, drop it in there, and then And then I hold the strop out here, and it uh, it doesn't tend to twist the strop as much. Um, you know, I mean, I guess if you really laid into it, uh, the cord might start kind of digging into the sides of the the leather strop. But typically, you know, I've used one of the I've used this the chromium oxide side. You know, I mean, I might pull it out and use it. I don't know maybe a half a dozen times a year so and you're only doing 10 15 licks and then you put it back up and that's it so it's not like you really use that part a whole lot so anyway so stropping um, what I've got here is I've got my gold dollar plain Jane old ten dollar razor off of Amazon right and they're pretty good razors um, once you get an edge on them you know they're really not bad um, there's nothing fancy about them, but uh, they're kind of like, you know, a, uh, a Chevy Lumina or a, a Ford Taurus or something like that. You know, they, they work good. They get the job done. Um, there's nothing fancy about them, but, you know, they're also pretty dang cheap. Or inexpensive, maybe, I should say. Okay, so when you're using a strop, probably the most important thing, uh, yeah, Everything's always the most important, right? So we're going to say, well, an important thing is going to be your strop tension, okay? So you want to pull this thing taut, all right, which isn't tight. You want it to have a little bit of give to it. And by a little bit, I mean, you know, a little bit. I mean, you don't want it to, to be completely straight. If you wanted that, then you would get uh, what's called a paddle strop. <coughs> excuse me, which is the strop material that is glued to or, or magnets on a board, okay? But the biggest thing about a strop is that not only does it maintain your edge, but it actually creates kind of like a micro bevel. And I probably should have, should have made this drawing to start off with. We'll grab one of my order cards and, and just whip one up right quick. There's a pin. Alright, so let's bring you up in here. Sorry, I've got some. I already started working on the next couple of batches. We've got uh, some pad, sab pattern pairs, um, a couple of more of the toggle locks, um, some slip joints, some 8 inch shifts, and some hunters. 
Uh, okay, so your edge, well, that's a dull pin. Okay, so your edge on a straight razor is going to look something, well, the cross section of the blade is going to look something like this. You might not be able to see that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you've got a nice hollow grind, you've got the thick, wide spine, and then you've got your very edge, okay? These right here are your edge bevels. What we work so hard to um, keep them looking real nice with a nice finish and consistent scratch pattern from the shoulder of the edge uh, right to the very edge, all right? Now, what a strop does, now, this being one single plane from here to here is going to be flat because you created it on a stone. All right. Now, if we make that part bigger, like that, okay, this is going to be what's, uh, it's going to be a kind of a harsh edge, okay, because of these nice straight planes. So, what we do is as we strop it, uh, let's see. We'll draw it kind of like this, okay? As we're bringing that edge along the strop, the strop will kind of flex. It'll kind of curl around the edge. And what it'll do is it'll kind of create, all right, I'm trying to draw this and hold it steady through this two inch screen at the same time. What it'll kind of do is round this out some. It'll make it convex, okay? so that you've got a nice little rounded portion here that's actually uh, behind the, the, the shaving edge. And what that does is it gives you um, not quite so harsh of an edge up against your face. Um, and it makes your shave a little bit more comfortable at the same time <coughs> that it tunes the edge up in between shaves. So to get that, now what I mean by tension being your probably very important, okay, is as you can see, as I put some pressure on this strop, it kind of bends it down some, right? Well, that's what's going to create the rounding off right at the very edge. Now the pressure, the amount of pressure that you, or the amount of tension that you put on the strop isn't as important as being consistent, okay? So you if you put, you know, about this amount of pressure here to where the strop deflects a half inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch, whatever it is, okay, if you strop one day like that, and then the next time you come back and you strop with it, uh, we'll just grab the handle, and the next time you go to strop with it, you do something like this, well, then you're changing your final sharpening edge or your final shaving edge, okay? And then the next time you come back to something, you know, fairly normal, and then the next time you let it really get all wonky, well then, this time right here, since it's the bigger angle, is the only time you're ever gonna be doing anything. If you strop like this one time, then you have to strop like that the rest of the time, okay? At that same, you know, roughly that same angle. Otherwise, when you come back in here to sharp to strop again, you won't actually be contacting the edge, you'll be contacting the edge bevel. Does that make that about as clear as mud? Okay. So, your strop tension is the most important. Now that I'm kind of back in position where I normally strop, usually I like to kind of pull it uh, taut and then anchor that hand up against my, my rib cage or my hip, you know, wherever and then I adjust the tension with my body position, okay, because that way it's, uh, it's just a little bit better form, um, that way your hand, your wrist, your arm don't get tired out because you're, you know, it's anchored, all right. Now to start off with, um, right after you put a fresh edge um, on your stones, on your razor, okay, I typically do, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, um, wow, well, no, Right after the stone, I go to the, the chromium oxide, and I usually do 10, 15 laps, something like that, just to kind of get the edge um, rounded off a little bit, you know, to create that little convex 
micro bevel, if you will. All right. Then after that, you know, I might come in here and do 20 um, licks on the canvas. Then in the morning, every before every shave, I typically do 20 or 30. 20 or 30 licks on the leather. Then after the shave, I do, I don't know, you know, maybe a half a dozen uh, palm strops just to clean the edge off to get all the blood and the uh, skin and the, the hair and the, the soap scum off of it. Then after the shave, I'll do 10 to 15 on the linen and about this speed. I mean, you don't have to be in a real big hurry. In fact, you could probably even go slower than that to get started. Sometimes you see guys that are just whipping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I don't really care for that because typically, um, you know, the, the faster you try to go, uh, the less control you're going to have over the blade. So just nice, smooth, easy strokes, maintaining the same amount of uh, tension on the strop so that the strop deflects the same amount. Now, if you notice, I like holding both handles together, okay? That way, that underside kind of gives a little bit of support to the upper side, all right? Um, when you go to strop, put the spine down on the strop, okay? Gently put, uh, rotate the, the razor until the edge is almost contacting the strop, okay? Now, as you start your motion, drop that edge in to where it contacts, and then lift it up right at the end. Okay, Rotate the razor. As you get it moving, let the edge contact the strop. And then when you get to the end, bring the, bring the edge up off the strop before you quit moving. Okay, So it's strop, press down, lift up, press down, lift up, press down, lift up, press down, lift up, press down, lift up. You know, that speed is just fine, right? Now, the amount of pressure that you're putting on the, the razor itself, okay, is not very much, okay? Pretty much the weight of the razor plus a little bit more. Um, anytime you just try to lay something on there and then move it, generally it's not going to be a smooth movement, okay? But if you put just enough pressure down, I mean, try, try taking a pencil and signing your name as light as you, just using the weight of the pencil, okay? What you'll find is that your, your muscles will tremor a little bit, okay? They'll be confused. They'll be like, well, are we pressing down or are we lifting up? Are we pressing down or are we lifting up? And what will happen is, is your pencil will skip over the, the paper, It'll contact the paper a little bit, and then it won't contact the paper a little bit. And the whole time, your finger muscles are confused as to what it is that they're trying to do. And you'll find that your fingers will be tired after just signing your name because of the effort required um, to be in that spot where you're contacting and you're not. Okay? So what you do is you put the weight of the razor on the strop, and then you press down just enough to get over that. All right, so that your hand knows that, yes, I'm pressing, but I'm pressing very, very lightly, okay? And that will help you maintain smooth contact uh, between the razor and the strop because it's the contact that does the work, the contact and the motion over the, the strop, not so much the pressure, okay? So, nice, light pressure. The strop should deflect a little bit as it's going across. Nice, smooth strokes. Um, try to get, like on these three inch wide strops, it's not such a big deal because most razors are about three inches long or a little bit less. If you've got a big strop or a big razor or a shorter or a narrower strop, then you will have to do the X stroke. Okay? where you contact the heel and then contact the point. Contact the heel, then contact the point. But on these nice three inch wide strops, uh, you don't really have to worry about it so much. Anyway, stropping is, is probably, uh, well there we go again, the most important thing, everything being the most important thing. Um, stropping is very, very important to 
the maintenance of your straight razor? Um, not only keeping the edge free of you know contaminants that might hold moisture up against the edge and corrode the edge, but also into keeping that edge at tip-top condition um, so that you get a smooth and, and comfortable and enjoyable shave. Like I said, that last video I did, uh, honing a straight razor from start to finish, I think is what I'm going to call it, um, I actually give you pictures um, and footage underneath uh, the stereo microscope as to what that edge looks like before the chromium oxide, after the chromium oxide, uh, and then after the, the plain linen, and then after the leather. And you get to see <coughs> excuse me, just how much polishing that strop actually does and how it really cleans up the edge and keeps it in tip-top shape. Anyway, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. I sincerely hope that if you aren't shaving with a straight razor already, that you pick one up and you give it a try. Um, pick, up, pick yourself up a nice strop. A nice strop ought to last you a really long time. So, um, you know, spend an extra couple of bucks to, to get a nice one or just get the nicest one that you can afford. Straight razor designs are my favorite. Actually, they're the only um, factory strop I've ever used. Um, besides a vintage one. Um, I would guess that Maggard's and some of the other places have already got similar to, to the ones that, that uh, Lynn's got. But anyway, pick one of them up, give it a shot, practice, 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 and enjoy your shaves. Anyway, we will see you next time.